Hey everyone, Jared VK3BL here, and um, don't mind the um, garish headphones I'm wearing at the moment. As some of you may have noticed, in our recent videos, we've had um, weird audio pops and clicks, and it turned out that I'd tripped over my lapel mic a few too many times. So <laughs> I've got a new one, um, and this particular lapel mic allows for audio out, so I can sort of monitor it. Um, it's pretty useless because it is very delayed, but um, on the bright side, if I can get over hearing my voice about a second later as an echo, um, I'm aware of whether or not there's microphone problems, so that's a great thing. Anyway, that aside, what I wanted to talk about today is the correct way of splitting an antenna between two receivers. Now, a lot of people, it's a bit of controversy when I made the video saying, IC7610, what the, the RX out isn't an RX out. It's actually part of a RX loop. Um, and, and some people pointed out that, you know, um, that's by design and how it's supposed to be. And I accepted that. Um, I was hoping it would be more of an RX out like the one on the TS590 or the um, FTDX3000, where you could just plug in one of these little SDR plays and away you go with a, a second receiver and a, a band scope, but not to be. So the first thing that was suggested was go and get a T connector. I'll hold this one really close. And this one looks all right to me. Um, it's not a BNC one, but it is a T connector. And you can see, you know, one in, two out. And at first that seems like a reasonable idea. But when you do a bit of digging into the subject about how to connect multiple receivers to one antenna and do a bit of reading, you find out that this is not a good way at all. Um, and the main reason, in the, well, there's two really, there's two main reasons why it's bad. The first one is not all receivers are equal. While um, nominally a good receiver has a 50 ohm receive impedance, not all of them do. Um, and there was a great write-up on a, on a website where I found out about this. Um, one of the guys in the Facebook IC7610 group actually let me know um, in, the, in my post about the um, what the uh, with the IC7610. He said, hey, check this website out. And so I did. And um, basically, there's a story and it started off that a bunch of hams were all listening to the one antenna. And... One ham had a really old receiver, and he was pulling in the signals. They were absolutely fantastic. Whereas some of the other hams at, at the site, they had brand new, you know, this sort of style receiver. And I was thinking, why is the old, you know, I'm, I'm just picking one out here, but why is the old FT101 bringing the signals in when the high-end receiver isn't? And the answer was, the FT101, or well, please don't take that seriously, the, the, the old boat anchor, um, it had a lower impedance, so it was getting the lion's share of the signal. And while I haven't measured, um, you know, an SDR play, some people have mentioned that, you know, the, the lower end S, um, USB SDR dongles don't always present a 50 ohm impedance. And um, you'd have to measure it for yourself with the SDR play, but, you know, that's something that's worth investigating. Um, on the other hand, if you've done what I've done, now this is my homebrew one I made when I had my old call sign, my standard call. Oh, sorry. That is a Realtek SDR that I put in a fancy little metal case. Um, and I can assure you, it does not present a 50 ohm impedance. Um, I once IF tapped one of my early receivers without a buffer amplifier. And the minute I plug this in, I'd lose 6 to 9 dB of sensitivity. And that wasn't the worst part. And this brings me to part number two. When you use a T connector, there's no isolation between the, um, the receivers. So if you plug in something like this, which is connected to a computer, and you know there's very little filtering and all of that, that's why I tried the middle case in the first place, you will all of a sudden get birdies on your main receiver. So by using a simple T connector, you'll actually degrade your system performance. Your, your good receiver will lose sensitivity. It will, it will suddenly get birdies it never had before. 
and um, even you, and your SDL will probably get the lion's share of the signal. So not a good solution. So anyway, while reading that website, they reviewed three different products. And one of them was this little guy. And I had I got this guy from uh, Jonathan at Mini Circuits. He, he helped me out. Um, they donated it to the channel. So thank you very much, Mini Circuits and Jonathan, for organizing that. Uh, we just had to pay for postage. And we got here in an instant. I'm so happy. And we're going to do some awesome simultaneous um, receiving tests, basically, on the ICR8600 and the IC7610 and every other radio I've got in the shack here. This is going to let us do it. And why is this little guy better? So that's a mini circuits. I'm just trying to get this right on the camera. And it's Zulu Sierra Charlie ZSC dash two dash two plus. Um, that might be a bit better. The camera is not that great with close in. Why is this guy better? A couple of reasons. Firstly, they've engineered it. It's not just, you know, someone um, seeing something like this and going, I can copy that and then never testing it again. Just, just, you know, making sure the mechanics look right. These guys, mini circuits take um, great efforts to make sure their products meet a spec sheet. And you can go and download the spec sheet and it will tell you everything about it. And it's really reassuring, you know? When was the last time you got a spec sheet with a T-connector? And now I know I'm sounding excited about this product and I'm not, this isn't because mini circuit, I've got an obligation to mini circuits. It's because it's quite affordable and it really does expand what you can do in the shack. And that excites me. The fact that I can do a fair comparison between two receivers, um, you know, I, I think that's a, a good thing for my channel. So. I'm excited about it because it really ha helps me bring you good videos. Now, whether or not you want to get excited about it, that, that's your choice. But anyway, more to the point. When you plug your source antenna in, um, it'll split it between the two other ports. So it's a, um, a three-port device, uh, one input, two outputs. Now, the beautiful thing about it is that up to about 14, 20 meter band, you've got greater than 30 dB of isolation between the two output ports. So that means if you've got uh, El Cheapo SDR plugged into port two and really expensive radio plugged into port one, any birdies this generates will be attenuated by 30 dB on this port. So that's a good thing. You might need a little bit more attenuation, but you can solve that with an inline attenuator. Um, I think 30 dB is probably fine. You know, birdies generally aren't that high, even on a really entry-level product like this. Certainly for something like an SDR play, um, this is the perfect go-to. The other good thing about it um, is that the attenuation is nominally a, just over, a fraction over three decibels. So it's almost as good as what theory would suggest, and that's a great thing. Um, and the reason that is, is the way it's designed, and I believe it's um, a couple of, a few windings around a toroid, but I could be wrong. I know people have made them like that. The reason that is, and I've done testing, is that if you present, say, a 10 ohm load on one port and a 50 ohm high end transceiver on the other port, they won't interfere with each other. The, the transceiver will still get a good, you know, nominal 48 ohm output on this port. So it won't ruin the matching of your nice radio. So they're the two real selling points. The fact that, um, you know, it has isolation between the two outputs um, and the fact that it has presents a good um, impedance match for both, out, um, for both outputs. So, you know, if you've got a 10 ohm load on this, this is gonna be a 50 ohm output. So there's gonna be a bit of mismatch, but um, you know, that's the fault of El Cheapo SDR used as a pan adapter, not this device. This is fantastic. Really small. It looks handmade. Um, the quality is fantastic. I, I couldn't be happier. So thank you very much, Jonathan. It's a real asset to have in this channel. Um, 
I believe they're around the $60, $60 US mark. So if you live stateside and you want to do this kind of receiver comparison, um, uh, some guys at some spectrum analyzers did a test of a few of these devices, and this one came out on top. So I've got no problems recommending it. Um, anyway, I'll show you how to plug it in. So the way I'm doing it with this guy is I'm using the RX out um, loop, and that comes here. Now this one over here is my RX in on the 7610, um, which I like to have where, I'm uh, just getting this right, on port one. And this one over here is the antenna in of the ICR 8600. And I put that on port two. That way I sort of know which one's my receiver and which one's the guest receiver, so to speak. So we'll just sit that there. And now if I turn this up, unfortunately there's not much on the band. But if I now go and hold down antenna one, that activates the RX loop. And all of a sudden this guy over here starts receiving a signal. Now the other great thing is because they're, um, uh, uh, you know, they're isolated from each other and the, it presents a good impedance match. If you want, you don't have to have both receivers on the same band. So I can go and change this guy over here to say 20 megahertz and I will be able to receive stuff. Now it is, a, it is quite a bit down um, and that's because my tuner is set to, um, you know, the, the uh, 40 meter band, so it's not optimal. If I went and tuned up, you'd get better, or if you had a broadband antenna, um, you, you'd find it was quite a bit better. But that said, you know, you still make out what's going on on the band. So really love that device. Um, so happy it came to the chat quickly and will let me, you know, do some demonstrations using, you know, the SDR play, a comparison, um, high-end receivers, even a IC70, 610 versus IC7300. And the thing that's going to be really beneficial is I can show you guys exactly what the audio sounds like because I can record directly to a, an SD card and I can do it using exactly the same antenna at exactly the same time. So there'll be two wave files. You can listen to them, one in each ear, and decide for yourself whether there's a difference that is worth spending the money on. Um, so, yeah, pretty cool. So I'm really, really excited about that. That's another one of the things we're going to do. And I hope I explained um, not only how to use the RX loop on this, um, you basically connect the RX out onto your input port. You connect the, one of the output ports on your splitter back into the RX input port on this. And then whenever you want to activate it, you just hold down the antenna you're using. And it will say ANT1 slash R. And that means you're using the receive loop and you're splitting the signal. And you can see when I do it, well, I probably need a close up, you hardly lose any signal. And it is about just over a fraction over three dB, so very high quality. Um, and that's gonna be a lot of fun. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm gonna make some more today. Um, certainly on, hopefully on Monday, I'm hoping to do another recording of the 7130DX net. Um, because you've got some strong signals, some weak signals, and it's a great way of seeing, um, or hearing as well, how the radios handle the two different things. Um, yeah, you know, the weak signal or the strong signal. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, if you have any requests of other radios you want compared, for instance, the uh, 7610 compared to a 7100, or I've got an FT101 there that I want to try sooner or later too. So i um, really happy to have one of those in the shack. Um, yeah, put them, put them in the comments. We're, we're keen to, to do what the viewers want um, and, you know, explore the topics people want. So, yeah, I hope I've explained um, why you need a, a proper splitter, why you can't just use uh, Mr. T. He's a good character for a TV show. He's a bad splitter for antennas. Just remember that one. Um, and how to use the 7610 um, with a second uh, receiver in line. So... That's pretty cool setup, actually. You know, you've got 
two independent SDR receivers in this and another SDR receiver over there. So you can definitely have a lot of fun and it doesn't cost you much to get one of these. Um, if for some reason mini circuits isn't your flavor, there's a couple of other models on the market. See the Facebook groups, there's some reviews uh, on there of some of the different ones. Um, and they're all, well, I think the mini circuits one's probably one of the better value ones, but certainly if you can afford the 7610, you're gonna have no trouble at all affording the, um, the, the, and the nice splitter, so there you go. Anyway, this is Jared VK3BL. Doesn't sound like there's been any audio problems with this video, and, um, I hope to bring you some more rather soon. Um, catch you later. Thanks to everyone. Thanks to uh, uh, George. He, um, he's, I've been chatting with him on Facebook quite a, quite a bit. He's another YouTuber. Um, I forget his call sign, but uh, he's been very supportive of our channel. Um, thanks to John as well. He runs some of the IC7610 groups on Facebook and the 7300 ones. And um, if I forgot to mention you and you want a shout out, just uh, send me send me a... Um, uh, an email or a Facebook message or a comment in YouTube. You know, I don't want to let anyone down, guys. So um, I'll, I'll talk to you soon. This is Jared VK3BL for Rate My Radio. And yes, there are more than me in the team. Um, I'll catch you soon. Cheers. 73.